to you, the show that celebrates the art of lying. On Lee Mack's team tonight, the England star who once beat Wayne Sleep. Luckily, it was in I'm a Celebrity and not with a cricket bat. It's Phil Tufnell! <laughs> and a splendid comedian who likes to satirise the great and the good. So it'll be nice for him to have a night off and mix with us lot. It's Marcus Brigsaw! <laughs> And joining David Mitchell tonight, an actor and comedian who, during his 13 years as a drama teacher, said he found his pupils inspirational. They inspired him to leave teaching and become a comedian. <laughs> Greg Davis! <laughs> and as one of the longest-serving presenters on Blue Peter, she became an expert at explaining things in a way that a child could understand. Excellent training for sitting opposite Lee this evening. It's Connie Huck! <laughs> Right, we start with uh, round one, which is Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the truth from the lies. And, Greg, you are first. Am I? You are, yes. <laughs> <laughs> For my first term at university, I rented the bathroom in a student house and slept in the bathtub every night. Yes. Before we even start this, can you stand up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there'll, there'll be no, unless David stands up with me, there'll be no perspective. David? In fact, let's have proper perspective. <laughs> Connie, can you stand up? <laughs> you know the question. <laughs> yeah. What's the answer? Uh, well, I just uh, hung off the end of the bath. As I hang off every single bed that I've ever slept in, it's... No, 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 no. You definitely don't hang off a bath. No, like you no. hang off a bed. <laughs> because a bed flat. go like that and then you hang off. Yeah. You'd have thing... to go up and cross and hang off. Yeah. It's thing... all, but you're not a snake, Greg. The thing <laughs> what actually uh, drove me to change my circumstances was that I was genuinely... I was bruising the side of my... Uh, cheek regularly by waking up in the morning and clanging into one of the taps. Why Can I ask why on earth you would sleep with your head at the tap end? <laughs> <laughs> that is mad. Yes, well, you know, I was 18 years of age and I mainly lived off uh, Thunderbird wine, so bad so decisions putting... were my forte at that period. <laughs> so did, you have, did you have a bed? No. In the house? Did you do... oh, oh, so that was the reason you were in was, the bar? There was a... There was a um... well, why did you think you were in the bar? <laughs> I, cho I chose to, Phil, yeah. How many other people were there in the flat? Uh, three. Three people, what, three beds? Yeah. Why would you not sleep on the floor next to the bath? We had a giant uh, 1970s sofa that had a particularly a peculiar cor corner unit, mm. and I mm. took um, both cushions from that corner unit, and they fitted in the bath perfectly, and it was incredibly comfortable. So, hang on, it wasn't a freestanding bath? A roll top. Yeah, was it a roll-top freestanding bath? It, roll -top it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a freestanding bath, but the, but the end of the bath projected out into the room. Where was this, Greg? Which town we, we, was this, Oxford or Cambridge? <laughs> <laughs> it was in Isleworth in West London. <laughs> <laughs> it was only because of a, a, a mix-up in housing agreements. Uh, we soon sorted out after a term. I only had to do it for a term. What was the mix-up? I'd agreed to move in with these three guys and we got the wrong size house. My <laughs> God, that's not, that's not a mix-up, that's just stupidity. Yeah, there was well, four of you, and you got a three-bedroom house with a bit of a mix-up. Okay. <laughs> the boys blamed me, which is why I got the bath. Why did they blame you? Because I was the one who booked the house. <laughs> How did you get into university? <laughs> So, Lee, what are you thinking? Marcus. I think it's too preposterous to be true. Mm. The taps. Phil? Taps for me, you don't... If you're going to sleep in a bath, you don't put your head no. at the taps. Okay. I think it might be true, but I'm not going to over... Oh, well, you're the skip. You'll cut the armbands, son. I might be the skip. Do you get armbands if you're a captain? <laughs> Only if you can't swim. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I don't know this is in the spirit of this game, this is true. <laughs> That was sufficiently moving. <laughs> I'm, I'm, going, I'm going with it. I'm saying it's true now. What are you saying, Skippy? Should we say true? True. Not Skippy, Skippy Rob, not Skippy. <laughs> <laughs> That's not I'm not going to go and fetch help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Skip. Right? I'm a 
has fallen into a mine shaft. <laughs> Go on, mate. True, we true, true, we're, true. we're going for truth. You're saying it's true. Greg Davis, were you telling us the truth or were you telling a lie? Do you feel, David, any sense of genuine competition in this game? Yes, I do, yeah. And I think you're going to like me very much. It was a lie. Yes, it was a lie. Greg didn't sleep in his bathtub every night for his first term at university. Right, Phil Tufnell, yes. you're next. Right. OK. I'm haunted by a recurring dream in which I'm a potato. <laughs> <laughs> David. OK. How does... <laughs> How does the dreaming realisation that you're a potato yes. manifest itself? Um, I'm being chased. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Potatoes get chased all the time. <laughs> I'm being chased by a pitchfork. Right. How do you know you're a potato? Because um, you can't <laughs> move. No, 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 I can't. I've got it's like Mr. Potato Head, wear a little trilby hat, little legs, and I'm running along the garden <laughs> like that. Uh, with a pitchfork trying so to a... poke me. And I'm sort of climbing up trees and things and the pitchfork sort of going for me and... Has it ever caught you? Um, no, it has never caught me yet. And then, uh, just as it is going to catch me, I think I wake up. What do you think that the pitchfork wants to do? Are you, are you, <laughs> has it attempted to harvest it's a, you? It, it's a family show. <laughs> I think all the symbols... <laughs> Heavy with symbolism, David. Yes, it is, isn't it? The, yes, there's the a lot of... The sturdy steel of the pitchfork, mm. the soft, <laughs> pliant flesh of the potato. <laughs> I, I, I'm no, getting a little worked it. up just thinking about it, to be honest with you. He didn't say it was boiled, did he? No, no, I think it's baked. Baked? Oh, it is baked. <laughs> baked potato. So you're a, you're a baked potato? I, I think I'm a baked... What, what are you doing in the garden if you're already cooked? <laughs> How long have you had this stream? I've had it... He only has it when he's mashed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've had quite a bit, actually, you know. They're, they're, it's quite at the forefront of my dream. I'm just sitting here listening to you. You could be related to Len Goodman from Strictly <laughs> Come Dancing. <laughs> could, you? Could, you, could you just yeah, say for me... Look at that, yeah. <laughs> your Paso Doble was lovely. I liked it. It was cool. You're a bit over there, but you're trying hard. I'm going to give you six. <laughs> I'm doing Len Goodman from Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> what do you think, David? Uh well, it's possible, isn't it? What do you think? Uh, I'm not convinced. I think it's, uh, without question, a lie, because when he was asked how the potato was moving, I actually saw Phil's brain working to <laughs> think of <laughs> Mr Potato Head. Yeah. It is true that lots of people have dreams, don't they, where they're being sort of chased, don't they? That's quite a, a natural mm. thing. Yes, generally, they, they, have, they haven't become a root vegetable. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> you think it could be true, don't you? Look, my brain is shot <laughs> by this game. I think anything could be true. <laughs> I am so sure it's a lie. Well, we're going to say it's a lie, then. So it's going to say it's mm. a lie. OK. Phil Tufnell, were you telling the truth or were you lying? I was telling... <laughs> no! It's true. Uh, Phil is haunted by a recurring dream in which he is a potato. Uh, there's, a, there's a technical term for Phil Tufnell turning into a potato. It's called evolution. <laughs> and our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Ian. <laughs> Sorry, even before we start, I can tell you now, lads, this man does not know David Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> Connie, what is Ian to you? Um, and this is Ian. When he brought his lizards onto Blue Peter, one of them went missing. Later that evening, I found it in my handbag. <laughs> All right. David, what's your connection? Uh, this is Ian. I sat next to him on a plane, and he had such a fear of flying that I had to hold his hand throughout takeoff and landing. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out David Mitchell.
Mitchell might know this man really, really well. Uh, Greg, how, how do you know Ian? Um, this is my friend Ian. Uh, one night after getting drunk together, he was wrongly arrested on suspicion of murder. <laughs> so there we have it. Tommy's uh, <laughs> lizard loser, David's terrified passenger, <clears throat> or Greg's falsely accused friend. Where do you want to start? Um, okay. So Ian here bought lizards to a flagship BBC ch children's programme yeah. and left going, well, you, you know, you don't always go home with the same number no, of lizards. The great thing with Blue Peter is if you lose an animal there, they'll make up a name for it. <laughs> what type of lizard? Yeah. Well, there was a selection of lizards. He mm. brought in about eight or ten lizards, right. and there were chameleons. And what did, other did of one of them change its colour to the same as your handbag? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's getting lost. It wasn't a chameleon. The lizard. Actually. What no. was it? It was a lizard. What was your handbag made? What time? Oh, the handbag was made of snake. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Where about, whereabouts were you at Blue Peter when you found the lizard in your hand? No, I wasn't. At, I was actually in my car and oh. the, my handbag was on the passenger seat. Yeah. So and you opened the, your bag to get some money out or something? I um, was in the multi story car park and oh. I wanted, I'd stopped and I just wanted to check that I had my phone. Right, and okay. So and then I was you like... You opened it, and did you go, uh, hello? Hello? <laughs> hello? I had a theory that someone put it in as a joke, but I don't know, mm. and I've not... Oh, the wacky days of Blue <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's in the spirit of this game, but it really is true. <laughs> Stupid enough to fall for this again. <laughs> I, I am. Okay, right. David. Yes. Just remind us again of your implausible story. <laughs> well, I was on a plane next yeah. to Ian, and he his fear of flying was such that I had to hold his hand during takeoff and landing. And where were you going from and to? I was going from uh, Gatwick to That's an airport. Think of another one now. <laughs> <laughs> Corsica. Yes, to Corsica. Yeah. And what did he say? Was there any, uh, for want of a better word, foreplay, or did he go straight <laughs> down? And it was on takeoff. Yeah. He just suddenly he started. What? He, he started sort of making agitated noises. Please, please, can you do the demonstration? <laughs> of the I think we all want oh, to see the agitated noise. Yeah. No. Go I, on. As I remember it, it was. I mean, it's just sort of. Uh, Sure, it wasn't the end. So basically, so he's standing agitated. Yeah. Has he grabbed your hand? Then he grabs my oh, hand. There's no talking. There's not. Do you mind if no. I? He's just so gone. Not at that point. No. You slag, David Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you say? Do you mind? I'm a married woman. I mean, what did you do? I, I don't. I don't think I said anything. You know why he's grabbed your hand, do you? You know he's. Well, I, th I assumed it was. I didn't think it, it was sexual attraction. Right. But it's very sweet of you to leap to that conclusion. <laughs> Did, did either of you have fellow travellers with you? Uh, no. No, you we were, were both well, just flying to Corsica. <laughs> yeah. To see what <laughs> might happen. <laughs> 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 I was seeing you meet on the plane, maybe. <laughs> and this happened again when you came in for landing? After we became, sort of, when it levelled off, yeah. we became fully airborne. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, that sounds like a virus. <laughs> 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 He, he then said, he sort of apologised and said, I'm really sorry, I'm, 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 I'm just got, I freak out sometimes on a plane. And I said, oh, you know, not to worry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, bet, I bet that can't be in there. I once stroked a girl's back while we were having a very difficult re-entry over... Uh, <laughs> well, we now, coming into Heathrow, and I didn't know her, and she was crying, and I huh? just reached out. Yeah. And just stroked her back. There and was held a reason her hand. why she was crying, wasn't there? <laughs> the madman behind was stroking her back. I wasn't behind her. I was, I was like that with those going, hey, it's okay, it's no look, it's fine, this is just turbulence. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is nothing. This is nothing, honestly. This is this is normal, really. This bloody hell. Oh, this, <laughs> not really. And she was quietly sobbing. I mean it was quite I'm faster yeah. nominated, I should point that out. <laughs> So these things do happen. Yeah. That's they yeah. definitely yeah. happen. There's definitely people getting nervous on flights. I think we have to deal with Greg's yeah. story. Go on, Greg. <laughs> Let's have it. I uh, got drunk with Ian. 
um, and later he was arrested wrongly on suspicion of murder. Um, thank God that bit's in. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the, what's the, what, what happened? Um, well, I, I wasn't really part of it because we both passed out. It was a, a college ball and right. we all drank vast amounts, particularly you and I drank uh, a ridiculous amount and then both collapsed. The last thing I remember is Ian falling down and, uh, and him obviously being horribly hurt. And uh, I woke up on a carpet and ran That's upstairs. That's a nice change from the bath. Not in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> I ran upstairs and he was sitting up in his bed, uh, honestly looking, his face was like a swollen, like a pumpkin. And uh, then he told me that that night, uh, when he'd been stumbling about drunk, he'd been arrested for murder because someone with a similar facial wound had murdered someone in the town. Someone with a similar... <laughs> oh, so the facial wound from falling? Yeah. And someone, someone with a similar facial wound had murdered somebody else? Yeah. That's Which, unlucky. Where so was this? What, so the... the <laughs> <laughs> Why did they... How did they know he wasn't the murderer? What was the defining point in the interview? He told me that they had questioned him for hours and eventually he said to the police, and I think this is a quote, I'll be honest with you, lads, I could well have done it. <laughs> It upsets me to think that police respond to double bluffs like that. <laughs> and just to be clear, it, it was proven at the end that he had absolutely nothing to do with it. Correct. Right. Obviously, Which... otherwise he wouldn't be here. Right. <laughs> we never established just why David was going to Corsica. On his own. Was it Club 18 to 30 again? <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was a holiday. I was going on holiday with a group of friends, but I could only go a day after everyone else. They made those sure. rules, did they? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, please, team. Is Ian Connie's reptile wrangler, David's frightened flyer, or Greg's suspicious friend? Which one are you going for? What do we think, Phil? I quite like Connie. Well, we all do. Well, there you go. <laughs> Focus film. Yeah. No, I can imagine a bit of blue PT. He looks yeah. like a chap who might sort of keep lizards. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I, I'm slightly leaning towards Greg, only because I don't, I don't believe David. Um, I'm inclined to think that Connie's story is, is true. Oh, go on then, Connie. If, you, if you've suckered these two idiots into it, I'll go along with that. <laughs> Ian. Would you like to reveal to us your true identity? My name is Ian. Whilst at college with uh, Greg Davis, we got very drunk oh, one night and uh, was wrongly arrested on suspicion of murder. When I went up in the morning, he was sitting upright in bed and his head was three times its natural size. <laughs> and I went, oh, my God, mate, are you all right? And he looked at me <laughs> like this and went, we've gone too far this time. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but against the clock. We will start with... <coughs> uh, Lee, yes. I once had to show my boss an intimate area of my body to prove why I was late for work. <laughs> Part of your body, and why did that prove that you were late for work? It was my. Uh, well, I think we all know what I'm talking about. I don't. No. <laughs> well, let's call him Mr. Wee Wee. You actually had to show it to him. I didn't. Well, I, I didn't have to. He didn't say. You elected. I say. Yeah. <laughs> Get it out, but I could tell he was doubting me. You I said, it. honestly, look, and I got it out. So what was what was it? What <laughs> that's the bit they're all waiting for. Yeah. <laughs> what did it prove? <laughs> Mr. Wee Wee had banged his head. <laughs> <laughs> what on? What on is a good question. Yeah. The ceiling. We don't get <laughs> Yeah, basically, uh, I, I, was, I was lying in bed <laughs> and I was naked and I think there was a tiny little bit of glass in the bed 
and it, would, it was, just wouldn't stop bleeding. So I had to get some tissue paper. I wrapped it round quite a lot, and I can't lie, it ended up looking like Mr Bump. <laughs> It was blue. It was blue. <laughs> yeah. I just put lots of it on, and then I just told him the truth. I and, said, sorry I'm late, there was an incident. Told him the incident. He went, as if say you're not telling the truth. I said, do you want to see it? Whizzed it out. He went, oh, it's Mr Bump. So every time someone... <laughs> <laughs> every time someone raises their eyebrows at you, your instinct is to get your penis. <laughs> Give you the sign. The thing is, <laughs> stop it, Greg. <laughs> you were in no position to deploy it. I, I, I was quite well covered. It was yeah. full of bandaged tissue yeah. paper, so it was it was easy to get it out and keep my dignity. In fact, it was quite, <laughs> I was quite proud of it. It was like this. I was like, I said, you want to have a look at it, mate? Wrap <laughs> your eyes around that little beauty. Yeah. Mr. Bumps fainted. Get used to it. <laughs> David, what do you think? Is he telling the truth? Let's have a decision for uh, Connie. Well, I could weirdly believe it. Yes, I could believe it. <laughs> I mean, it's a very extreme story to have made up. It's too much, so it must be true. Yeah. You're saying true? Yeah. Yeah, we're saying yeah. true. You're saying true. OK, Lee, truth or lie? It is, in fact, true. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's true. Lee went on to a successful career in entertainment while his boss went on to antidepressants and a course of trauma therapy. <laughs> Next. <coughs> it's David. I recently bought a cat, but took it back a day later because our personalities clashed. <laughs> Once again, David is mixing up the word cat and wife. <laughs> what was the matter with his personality? What were you clashing on? Well, um, the, the use of claws. <laughs> he didn't like that, did he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was he scratching? Scratching, well, slightly me, but, uh, but also furniture quite vigorously. Scratching your furniture. Yeah, there was a sort of corner of a sofa mm. and a corner of a table. Okay. Corners. <laughs> Always the corners. <laughs> Always corners. Was, he, uh, was he a kitten when you got him? No, sort of. I think sort of about two. Two years old. That's yeah. quite quick. Why did you buy a two year old cat rather than a kitten? <laughs> Well, it came from Battersea Cats and Dogs Home, yeah. which I, I thought so that was like a responsible it. place yeah. to source a pet, yeah, yeah, yeah. rather than, yeah. you know... Did you pay for the cat? Um, n no. Oh. No, it was a sort of, you, you know, you home it. You home it? You give it a home. <laughs> oh, I see. It was, it was a home. I thought you meant you threw it out the window yeah. like a pigeon. <laughs> did you? the cat. Yeah. I, uh, did they come round and have a look at where he was going to stay? No. Did it, know? No. No, it did with mine. Yeah, well, that's your, that, yeah. that's your history, Phil. <laughs> <film. laughs> that's, that's just you. That's just you. <laughs> what colour was it? What, what, what kind of style was it? Style. <laughs> what sort of... Yes. Art Deco. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of breed was it? It was uh, tortoise shell. Tortoise shell. The, sort of the odd blotch. <laughs> you took it back after one day. Yes. How long was it in your house before you went, oh, this is rubbish, <laughs> this is going back? I was suspicious after as little as an hour. <laughs> I, was, I was despondent after six hours. After eight hours, I was decided. <laughs> so what are you going to say, then, truth or lie? Lie for me. What do you say, Marcus? Oh, I don't know, no, I'm confused. A uh, lie, then. I'll say lie, then. You're going to say lie? OK, David, truth or lie? It is a lie. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it's a lie. David didn't buy a cat and then return it a day later because their personalities clashed. Uh, aloof, rather prickly in temperament and hard to befriend, David still doesn't have a cat. <laughs> Next. <coughs> and it's Greg. I used to try and scare school friends by planting a particular drawing in their pockets signifying death. <laughs> Lee, what do you think? What was the drawing? It was an owl. <laughs> what, what, 
What? The Owl of Death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, only, it's full title was actually the Hoot Owl Death Sign. Owl. Oh. What would you mean the Owl of Death? What was it doing in this drawing? Hoot Owl Death Sign. That old chestnut. I could draw it for you if you like. <laughs> Greg. Yeah. I've got a pen. I've got some paper. I'll come over there. No, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you. Don't stand up next to me. It just highlights it. <laughs> <laughs> can you, uh, Greg? Can you? <laughs> So please draw the owl of death. So. <laughs> Don't look at it, David, you'll die. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, my <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god, Oh! Oh, please put it away. <laughs> so just imagine, just imagine you're innocently, you went in your pocket, <laughs> innocently minding your own business. You go, oh, what's this in my. friends would find that in their pocket and be... Not my friends, my deadly enemies. Right. <laughs> what, would, what would be the purpose of that? It was uh, for people who had crossed my friend and I. Well, what kind of things would they have to do to cross you? There was an English teacher who we uh, found a bit boring, so he uh, slipped one in his pocket. That was, the, uh, that was the highlight of the whole campaign, actually, <laughs> was that the English teacher once stood up in front of the class and was chatting away and went into his pocket and went, oh. <laughs> And he went, sorry, everyone. Um, does anyone know anything about this? Because I've just... Did you, was the purpose of it to, to scare them? Like, you would tell yeah. them that later on it was you? Or... No, no, of course not. We were both nerdy cowards. <laughs> Did you, you created a sort of mythology around what might happen if you found the hoot owl of death in, in your pocket, In, in our minds, anyone who found the hoot owl of death in their pocket would... Uh, very shortly afterwards, meet their demise. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you take a guess, what are you going to say? Is what do we true? think, Phil? Do you think, um, that, do you think that is possible? I, th I think it's possible, but I think it's a, it's a lie. I think it's a lie. OK. My... You say lie, you say lie. What about you, Lee? I say lie. Right, Greg. Yes. Truth or lie? Well, it would be pretty tragic if two uh, boys had spent their youth doing <laughs> that, wouldn't it? True. And it is indeed <laughs> true. <laughs> Yes, it's true. Greg did try and scare school friends by planting a particular drawing in their pockets, signifying death. <laughs> well, that noise uh, signals time is up and it's the end of the show, and I can reveal that David's team are the victors by seven points to three. <laughs> but, of course, it's not just a team game. My individual liar of the week is Greg Davis. Yes, Greg Davis, whose uh, stories were so tall, some of them almost came up to his shoulder. Good night. <laughs>show that celebrates the dark art of the tall tale. On David Mitchell's team tonight, he's spied on more birds than a teenage Russell Brand. It's the comedian, naturalist and TV presenter, Bill Oddie. <laughs> and one of the country's best-loved comedians who's also had a number one hit in the charts. Finally, someone I can relate to. It's Frank Skinner! <laughs> And joining Lee Mack tonight, a comedian who used to have a job in a call centre. She says it wasn't that bad, but the daily 17-hour commute to Mumbai was knackering. <laughs> Sarah Millican! <laughs> and a comedian who trained as a chef but had to give it up when he realised he wasn't a rude, cantankerous arse. <laughs> John Richardson! So we start with uh, round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the truth from the lies. And Sarah Millican is first tonight. Sarah. Okay. 
I once wet myself in a car and then blamed it on my friend's dog. <laughs> David. Right. Um, I mean, it's... I'm willing to believe it. I'll <laughs> say that at this point. Why did you wet yourself in a car? Because I needed a wee in a car. <laughs> I've needed a wee in a car, but I've never weed in a car. <laughs> I was once stuck in a very long a line of traffic trying to get onto the Seven Bridge on the M4, and I let myself go in a one-litre bottle of Volvic. <laughs> I did that on the motorway, and my problem was I was really desperate, and I had a bottle of water, and I had to drink the water. <laughs> <laughs> my body was saying, no, no more water. So it was a, it was a terrible cyclical thing. No yeah. sooner I got it down, it was out again. <laughs> to draw attention to myself because <laughs> people might pull up either side and I'd clearly by my facial expression be urinating at that <laughs> oh, please show us that face <laughs> <laughs> so I mean this is obviously just for everyone but me a commonplace occurrence yes. I don't, you know basically lavatories are just for me <laughs> <laughs> what a great what? name for your autobiography yeah. <laughs> Who did you blame the dog to, if you see what I mean? Uh, to the mechanic uh, when I took it in for a <laughs> ballot. <laughs> so whose car was it? My car. Your car. You peed in the car. Yep. Uh, were you in a... Is there a good reason for that? Were you in a traffic jam after a large bottle of Evian? Oh, it's, uh, well, just tap water, probably. Um... Right. <laughs> I've never been in a car with a tap, so, you know... <laughs> it's a very posh car. All right. Um, yeah, I was stuck it's in it. It's so posh, it's plumbed in. <laughs> it's actually got gangs of people following it with pipes. Well, to be fair, if it was plumbed in, I'd have probably had a toilet in there as well, wouldn't yes. I? <laughs> I've never done this, but is it conceivable? Because as a woman, you don't really have much control over where it's going. But as a man, is it conceivable you could aim it out of the window? <laughs> you could, you could, but the speed you were going at would mean it all came straight yeah. back in you. <laughs> so when you got to this mechanic, what did you, uh, what did you say? I mean, was the stain so clearly visible? No, it had sunk right in. Was he a bit confused that the dog was driving? <laughs> <laughs> no, because it wasn't on the driver's seat. You change seats oh. well, you? <laughs> That is dangerous. <laughs> you change seat in a traffic jam where you're in control of the vehicle. Yes. You can't buy class, can you? <laughs> <laughs> if I looked in a rear-view mirror, I'd think that passenger looks very, very content considering there's no-one driving. <laughs> <laughs> thinking, David? What do you think, Mary? I just think Sarah is the kind of strong, independent woman who would <laughs> step out of her car, stride to the hard <laughs> shoulder, <laughs> and say, just go... <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then do it. Yeah. Bill, do you believe it? <laughs> yes, I right. think it happened. Well, you think it's true and you think it's a lie. So I have to decide, yes. which I hate. No, um, I think... I think it's true. I you think it's it. true? So, yeah. OK. So, in that case, Sarah, truth or lie? It is, uh, true. <laughs> well done, David. Well, you listen to that in the future. <laughs> Goodness me. <laughs> I was stuck in traffic for two and a half hours. I was in absolute agony and thought it was the only way out, and it was either that or rupture something, so I just... Moved across, stripped. <laughs> Weed, moved across, pulled back up, champion. <laughs> well, there we are. And uh, if you've been affected by any of the issues raised on the show... <laughs> uh, Frank. OK. I was once driven to A&E in an ice cream van. In place of a siren, the driver turned on the musical chimes. <laughs> What happened to you that involved having to go to A and E? Well, I was um, I was playing um, rounders, and <laughs> I ran in between bases, and I sort of went over on my ankle, and it was in Cornwall. Your ankle? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how far out of place it went. <laughs> 
So I was in, I mean, real proper agony. Like, honestly, I thought I was going to black out. It hurt so much. And um, somebody phoned an ambulance. And it probably was about 25 minutes. Um, and still no sign. This bloke came over from the ice cream van. And um, he said, I'll, I'll take you to the hospital. So they're trying to dial the emergency service. Perhaps instead of dialing no, 999, dial press they... 99. <laughs> <laughs> it's easily done. <laughs> but, so you've gone over on your ankle. Yeah. And the ice cream man has seen you from a distance, hasn't well, we it? didn't have a car. We all got the train down, so no one had a car with them. Right. So this bloke said, I'll give you... And I was just... The idea of getting to somewhere where they could just give me a painkilling injection would have been lovely. And presumably he didn't get the siren going straight away. No, it, it wasn't the siren, it was, it was green sleeves. Well, green sleeves, but... <laughs> Did you, like, give him some money for a lost trade? Oh, no. <laughs> John, when you've been a celebrity a bit longer, you'll realise that money's no longer relevant. <laughs> Well, that's informal, were you? I was in Truro. I don't understand why you would put the siren on. I he, think he, I said... I didn't mention to him that I liked um, music from the Tudor period. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't understand why you were in Truro, cos if you didn't drive, you would have got the fast service to Penzance. <laughs> well, the holiday was a combination of rail travel and taxis. And a little bit of ice cream. Great bad. <laughs> so, time for a decision. What do we think? So I'm not happy with I... it. You're not happy with it. Not happy with it. You're not having it. Oh, I think it's true. I don't want to become Trevor Travel Planner, but if. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a rounders kit is something you throw in the boot of a car. You don't take it on a train. Okay, so you're saying it's true. I think it's true. John thinks it's a lie. Yeah. We'll say it's a lie then. You're going to say it's a lie. Okay, Frank. Truth or lie? It is. A lie. Yes, it's a lie. Frank wasn't driven to A&E in an ice cream van. In fact, accidents involving ice cream vans are incredibly rare, yet always result in the tragic loss of hundreds and thousands. <laughs> Bill, you're next. Right, OK. I was saved from drowning by a character from the children's show Rainbow. Wow. <laughs> Surprisingly buoyant, you six-foot felt-covered man. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on, we don't know, we don't know he's no, felt-covered. No. There was unfelt-covered men as well. People. Jeffrey. Human beings, I think. Jeffrey. Got... Jeffrey. Well, let's not give him any names. Um, don't help him. Oh. Which character? If he says Jeffrey, I'll kill you. <laughs> Freddy. Well, there was a Freddy. There was a Rod, Jane and Rod Freddy. Rod, Jane and Freddy, so... yeah. Yeah, that's... he was the sexier of them. Um... <laughs> I was like the pink hippo. <laughs> Only one that... arm, though. What? Yeah, George and Zippy had one arm each. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they did. The other arm was in the mouth, wasn't it? What are you saying? <laughs> Sorry. You say a lot of disgusting things on this show, but now you've gone too far. <laughs> so, Freddie has saved you from a... from a, what was that, a pond? From drowning. Didn't get the pond. It was it in the was sea. It was the ocean. The ocean, OK. Which the, ocean was it? It was the Indian Ocean. Did you get the train there? I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> now, the question I want to know is, is Fred from Rod, Jane and Freddy, is he on holiday with you, or is this an unbelievable coincidence? It is actually an unbelievable coincidence. Did he, he recognise you? Yes, he did. He yeah. you already? No, he did know me. I didn't... Uh, hadn't met anything like no, that. No, but he was aware. But he was aware that he. there was somebody in the sea, some way offshore, waving as if to say, I am drowning, probably, I am drowning. He probably thought you were doing the Funky Gibbon, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it might have been pre-Funky Gibbon. What know. year was it? Wow. <laughs> Surely human beings still lived in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the sea, yes. and then Rod, Jane and Freddie... Oh, just yeah. Freddie. Is he with Rod and Jane, by the way? And he was with Jane. Well, Jane Fred... and Freddie were, were a couple, weren't they? I Fred. think they still are a couple. Did Rod must have felt left out? He was giving it to Zippy. <laughs> 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 Do 
Did he cup you in the traditional... <laughs> no, he didn't cup me. <laughs> I don't mean... Oh, no. him. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm not suggesting he'd arrive before I save you. <laughs> <laughs> so I got pulled in backwards, yes, on my back. On the shore. Yes, back to the shore, and it was well, about... Well, how's he going to be back to the shore? He's not going to take him further out. <laughs> he might have been intercepted by a lifeboat. <laughs> <laughs> that was the angriest he has been in three series. <laughs> Don't come onto this show and soil the seats. <laughs> So, Bill, he gets you back yes. to the shore. Was yes. that the end of it? We then exchanged pleasantries and said, you know, are you, what the hell are you doing here? They were on holiday, we were on holiday. Total coincidence. My query would be this, and it's not train-related. <laughs> if no-one else yeah. but Freddy was around, how did you not know you were on holiday with Freddy? It was a very small island. I'll name-drop it now. And the Seychelles. Ooh, bit of class. <laughs> 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 Seychelles never no, said that. No, I will. <laughs> and... I also think the Seychelles sound nice. It's in there. <laughs> I've always adored the island of Mauritius. <laughs> if there's anybody well, with a tip from Alton Towers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lee, time for your decision. What is your laser like mind telling you? I... Me. It's a lie. Do you? Yeah, I think it's what? a lie because I don't remember any episodes of Rainbow that had Freddy swimming in them, so I'm not sure he could. <laughs> I think it's true, but I just have this really sad image Listen, of I've lots of other a... people watching you drown. Lots of people! bloody get him then? <laughs> OK, John says it's true, Sarah says it's a lie. I, I'm going to say it's true. OK. Very well, the answer is... It's true! No way! Yes, it's true. A bill was saved from drowning by Freddie from Rainbow. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Uh, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Kathy. <laughs> Welcome, Kathy. So, uh, John, what is Kathy to you? Uh, this is Kathy, and we crashed into each other while we were both on our driving test. Uh, Sarah, how do you know Kathy? Uh, this is my friend Kathy. We fooled the newspapers into reporting that she'd be left under the spell of a hypnotist at a hen party. And uh, Lee, what about you? This is Kathy. She's the hotel receptionist that I had to phone from my room when I found a peacock in my hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> So there we have it. John's pranged motorist, Sarah's newspaper prankster, or Lee's peacock remover. David, where would you like to start? Uh, John, your... Hi. Your driving test, you, wh wh how did the crash happen? What manoeuvre were you uh, attempting? Uh, I was pulling out of a junction onto a carriageway, but then I saw a car, so I stopped, and she drove into the back of me. Basically, two driving tests in convoy, as it yeah. were. Yeah, well, you, you, do the, you do the same route from the same... Driving school, didn't you? When you go to get your exam. Did oh. you file your test, John? Uh, we both had to have our tests annulled because of the accident. Annulled? <laughs> Does that, that usually involves the Pope, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> when, when was this, John? I, I, I had just had to renew my licence, so 11 years ago. 11 years ago, OK. Kathy hasn't changed the number in 11 years. She described it as weird what had happened, and I remember thinking, it wasn't weird, you hit me. <laughs> so she said we should keep numbers, jokingly, and said, so that we don't get our test on the same day next time. Lol. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did people say like... lol 11 years ago? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was just coming in then. Right. <laughs> Before we even knew you could write it down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, why, why did you, um... What's the story here? What? <laughs> the, the disinterested policeman. <laughs> I think you mean uninterested policeman. All good policemen are disinterested. Yes. Good point. <laughs> Not an amusing point. <laughs> but grammatically an absolute belter. Yeah. Yeah. What's the difference? What's the difference? 
<laughs> What's the difference between disinterested? What does disinterested mean? Disinterested means though? impartial. Uninterested means bored. Oh, I don't know which one the audience yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> so, please continue. Um, so, Sarah, <laughs> you fooled the newspapers <laughs> about a hypnotist at a hen party. Fooled uh, the newspapers into reporting that she had fallen under a spell uh, put under by the hypnotist at the hen party. And uh, what, what was the nature of the spell? What did Cathy think she was? Uh, every now and again, she would just burst into song as Madonna. So how, how did you then fool the paper? You, you, you just yeah. phoned them up? Just phoned them up and told them and... They printed it. <laughs> uh, they came out and did a photo shoot, the local paper. Did it end up in any national papers? Yeah, it ended up in most of the national papers. Seriously? Um, most? Yep. Was Cathy photographed? Was she in the paper looking Madonna-esque? Uh, yes, she was. David, okay. are you satisfied so, with your witness? Yes. Would you like to move on? Uh, so yeah, what about, what about Lee? Lee? You, were, you, had, you found a peacock in your hotel bed. <laughs> uh, yes, I found a peacock in my hotel room. Yeah. Did they have ornamental grounds? They, they had some sort of ornamental grounds to a degree. I don't, I don't, they definitely had peacocks. Did you hear the peacock? Uh, I, I woke up in the morning, it was ground floor, and, uh, uh, you know, like most blokes who sleep on their own hotels, it can get a bit whiffy, all right? So I opened the French doors that were in, oh, in the room. You I opened the, the French, French doors. Door. So I go into the swimming pool, which is very near my room. I come back with the dressing gown on. I walk in, and there's a peacock in my did, room. Yeah, did he do the thing with his tail? He saw me, and he sort of went like that. And I think his tail went up a little bit, and then he sort of ran around a bit, and then he sort of got a bit flustered. And I tried to waft him out the door. Yeah. I was a bit panicking, cos... I know a peacock doesn't sound very threatening, but it's one of those things that, in your room, suddenly becomes terrifying. So, now you've, you've, you've tried to waft the peacock out, and then you, you ring reception, yeah. Cathy answers. Yes. What, what, what do you say? I said, there's, uh, this is a bit weird, but there's a peacock in my room. And she said, oh, yeah. They do that a lot, believe it or not. Right. And she came round. She sort of just uh, literally sort of was more assertive than me. She wafted it with a bit more she, gunk. She stopped saying waft. It was a bit more masculine than that. <laughs> I, I said waft once and you haven't let it go, have you? <laughs> she used the pillow, made she a few noises. She did the pillow to... Uh, and to the, the peacock went the pe out. went out. The peacock went out and then uh, shut the... She even shut the doors for me. I was like, I could have done that. It was just a, it was a takeover bid by the peacocks to distract Cathy. When she got back to reception, 50 peacocks yeah. there. <laughs> this is our hotel now. <laughs> I just think... <laughs> <laughs> I just think a receptionist would phone someone else, another member of staff, to deal it with. It wasn't a big five-star hotel. It was a sort of... You know, I don't know what star it was, but it was a sort of... It, it was more casual, the hotel, than you're imagining. No, no. Peacocks are in very posh places and very formal places. But very rural places, generally. No, not... No, it's not like... You don't, you don't farm peacocks. Yes, you do. <laughs> People do farm peacocks. Well, no, but... Well, OK, yes. <laughs> the English countryside is covered in massive no, no. flocks of peacocks. No, but they do farm peacocks. Oh, peacock milk they... we endlessly drink. <laughs> hippie-ish than those hotels with peacocks <laughs> milling around. <laughs> in and out of the rooms and the occasional panicky comedian won't join in, won't pal up with the say peacocks. Waft, say it, go on, I don't know you want to say it. Tries to waft, waft the it out. <laughs> and the only, the only member of staff in the hotel has to come and make noises with the pillow. Do you know what? apologise to the peacock later and say, we won't let him stay here again. He's all stuck up. <laughs> So, uh, we need an answer. David's team is Kathy, John's unfortunate learner driver, Sarah's hypnotised hoaxer, or Lee's receptionist to the rescue? Well, you see, if we take Kathy, though, as the core of this whole thing, yes. I think Kathy looks too alternative and cool to work in a small, anonymous hotel. Do you know what I'd say to that, Frank? Have you ever noticed sometimes you're talking to the receptionist at a hotel yeah. and they seem one thing, and you see them in the local pub later that night, mm. and they can be quite punky. <laughs> <laughs> right, David, decision time. What are you going to say? Um, Bill, what do you think? I, I would think that it could be the peacock. Rescue. I can see her doing all the moves for Madonna. I can see her with three muscular black men behind her doing a synchronised dance. <laughs> <laughs>
So can she, by the look of it. <laughs> I think, I think it's Sarah's. I think it's a local paper scam. The local, that's what you're yeah. going for? Yeah. OK. Cathy, would you please reveal your true identity? Hi, I'm Cathy, and together, Sarah and I filled the local papers with our fake hypnotism story. <laughs> It was in the National Press, it went in the Star and the Express, but it was biggest news on the Shields Gazette, where it was front-page news. There it is. <laughs> Thank you very much, Cathy. <laughs> <laughs> which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth but against the clock. First off is... <coughs> it's Lee. When I'm at home, I amuse myself by shaving only half my face and doing that thing where you have a conversation between two people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what, what are the characters of the, of the shaved Lee, unshaven Lee? I'll often do a sailor, because that suits the look of the longer beard. Could, you, could we Sa have a little bit of sailor? I'm, I'm well. Looks like you've saved half your beard off again. <laughs> Hang on, that doesn't make sense, because it doesn't. It looks no. like he's got the complete no, no, beard. No, 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 no. He has got the beard, and he's talking to the so man to the other person, yes. Looks like you've shaved off your beard off again. Yeah, but the other yeah. person the looks like he's... The little boy looks up and goes, I couldn't help it, I had to, because I was feeling a bit hairy. Yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't make any sense, because the other one looks like he's completely shaved his beard. Is no, it... no, 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 sorry. I've shaved half the beard. Yes, yeah. yes, I have. The one with the beard is the sailor with the beard. Going, looks yeah. like you've shaved off your... Meaning look him. half your beard off. The other to the other one. Yeah. Who <laughs> says, sort of going, yes, I did. Yes, I did, you shaved half it off. But it doesn't look like they've shaved half it off. It just looks... They've shaved it, it all off. They've shaved it all off. I have you say that. You no, you're wrong. No, 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 I've shaved it all off. wrong, David. Wrong, wrong, wrong. I'll do it again. Right, man with half a beard. Yeah. You look like you've shaved... No, no, no. Yes, I had to, but you should see the other side. Look, it's still there. <laughs> and then the other fellow goes, I'm just as bad as you. Look. Clean <laughs> shaving. <laughs> you're watching. Let the story finish. You know I'm using it up. Why did you say <laughs> half in the first remark? He did you say, look how you shave your beard off again? Should we shave your whole beard off again? And he's going, yes, I know, but then now let me show you more fully. <laughs> like you did. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> say it like a red boy. Coincidence, because I too am a cock. Just laugh and clap. <laughs> <laughs> right, David, time for a decision. Well, I think we think it's a lie, don't we? I yes. think so, yes. Yeah, yeah. definitely a lie. Saying it's a lie. OK. Yeah. Lee, is it the truth or were you telling a lie? It is, in fact, true. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's true. Lee does amuse himself by shaving only half of his face and pretending to have a conversation <laughs> between two people. Uh, John. Possession. Right, there's a box under your desk. John, would you put, bring the box up, please? This is the emergency kit that I keep in my car at all times. OK. Well, not you... at all times, obviously. It's here. <laughs> John, will you take it out of the box and put it on the desk there? What would have been brilliant, then, if he had took his car out of that? <laughs> <laughs> there is. Can we investigate it? Yes. Do you want to? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'd quite like to. Like I'll, I'll be very careful well. with it. Are you going to bring it back? Well, yeah. 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 I'll be careful. There we go. Thank you. Oh, I've never given another man my box before. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I have. It's quite um, nice. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a mug, spotted mug. Yeah, well spotted. Yes, here's, here's options, Belgian chocolate. Okay. Bill, sorry, can you be careful with that? That's his mother's ashes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, chocolatey ashes. And here, are a little, little bottle of... Some red wine? Can Some I just say, wine. this is like the b most boring version of the generation game. <laughs> <laughs> Ready, steady, whoever. <laughs> it's a sort of a post-nuclear deal or no deal. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> right, OK, so take us through why you've got these items. <clears throat> well, I'm on the road a lot, and uh, yeah. I like uh, food and alcohol. Mm -hmm. So I make sure I have some in case I have an unexpected overnight stay. I love how, how seriously Bill and Frank are studying the product. <laughs> <laughs> this, this has got a very curious marking on it. It's a circle and a pregnant woman and a line going across it. What's that got I, That about? suggests to me that they don't advise that pregnant women drink. <laughs> oh. It's hardly hieroglyphics, <laughs> Bill, is it? <laughs> See what, if I found this in a car, I'd assume it was the flight recorder. <laughs> <laughs> David, time to guess. I think it's nonsense. So we have to say yeah. it's nonsense. Yeah. You're all saying it's yeah. a lie. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, John, uh, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? It is true. Oh. <laughs> And uh, I should say, if you're thinking of compiling an emergency car kit of your own, both Would I Lie to You and the BBC, would like to point out that. Other brands are available. <laughs> <laughs> and that noise signals time is up and it's the end of the show and I can reveal that tonight's winners by a massive seven points to three, Lee's team. Of course, it's not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week is Sarah Millican. <laughs> yes, Sarah Millican. Sarah hasn't lied so much since her first day on Loose Women when she told her co-hosts, honestly, I can't smell gin. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>